Hello and welcome, dear wonderful people. I'm Toli Zentadea from Andromeda Yoga Atelier. Every Thursday, I'm going to answer a real-time question we all might be struggling with considering yoga, mental health, and well-being. If you have a question, post it in the comments down below, and I'm going to try and answer it in the following weeks. The vlog is especially dedicated to people who are tired, tired of being tired, and tired of explaining how tired they are to everyone else. You can substitute the words tired with exhausted, feeling blue, stuck, busy, or whatever pops in your head. Use that. The past year has been hard for all of us. I myself have sent over 150 job applications and gotten less than a dozen job interviews. Sometimes I would still cry after a rejection because frankly, rejections just feel awful. It's because rejection makes me feel like I'm not good enough or that I'm a failure. This is not necessarily true, but this is a demonstration of today's question. Why am I my worst critic? Here are my three reasons why. I work harder to avoid critique. By criticizing myself first, others might criticize me less. And internalizing critique desensitizes me to critique in general. Number one, I work harder to avoid critique. Everyone wants to feel included and no one wants to be left out. When you get left out of a group, it feels like a punch in the gut. Similarly, being critiqued can be very painful, especially when people are making fun of something you cannot change, like the hair or the nose you were born with, or even the color of your skin. A person who is adamant on loving and accepting themselves would not even give a moment of thought to such opinions. But if you were growing up in an unstable environment that is controlling, less affectionate or abusive, it might leave you with lacking self-love and self-acceptance entirely. Instead, your worth may come from other sources like achievements, for example. I used to think if I did extraordinarily well in school, my parents will actually notice me and stop criticizing me so much. Well, Needless to say, the strategy did not work because no matter what I do, I cannot change how others feel about themselves or about me. In the end, this kind of thinking is just wishful thinking. Unsolicited critique will still happen no matter how much hard work you put into something. So if the feedback helps you grow and improve, then consider it, put it to use. If the feedback is not really a solution to a problem, it is just another opinion and that's it. Number two, by criticizing myself first, others might criticize me less. When I point out my flaws, I take away the chance for other people to point them out. I have repeated the same mean negative words to myself so often that I have desensitized myself to them. In reality, though, that is just such a bad idea because you are repeating negative thoughts about yourself to yourself all the time. You are practically drawing in bad karma and you might be sabotaging yourself by doing it. Moreover, how do you even know what is going to come out of the other person's mouth anyhow? What if they were about to say something really, really positive? A lot of times people tell me they're not enough of this or that to do yoga. I'm a yoga teacher and I think everyone can and should do yoga. So sometimes getting to yourself before others get to you is not necessary at all. Coming from this perspective, criticizing yourself just seems like an awful amount of energy going out of the window. Number three, internalizing critique desensitizes me to critique in general. If you get an anesthetic and then hit yourself on your head with a hammer over and over and over again, you might feel nothing anymore. But guess what? You are also going to crack your skull open. 
What if instead of banging yourself over your head with a hammer, you would just get rid of the anesthetic and throw away the hammer? Because failure and rejection in life are inevitable. They will happen at some point or another to 99.99% .99 of the people. But should one, two or dozen events really define me who I am or who you are as a person and if we are lovable? Heck no! Because if that was accurate, in reality, none of us would ever be worth any love or acceptance ever. And that is simply impossible. So why not just focus on the people in situations that are loving and accepting like this little yoga group I have here? To summarize, you cannot influence the actions of others by working harder, being smarter or more kind. You can only influence yourself by loving and accepting yourself the way you are. We are all just doing the best we can. More negativity towards yourself will only make you feel worse about yourself or numb out your feelings completely. And you're gonna not feel anything anymore. Most importantly, it will not prevent rejection or failure. Nothing will prevent rejection and failure, but you have the option to choose if that is really what is going to define you in life. Or maybe you can choose to be a person who gets up after every fall and keeps going, and that is what defines you instead. Trying and failing might just lead to eventually trying and succeeding in the end. With that thought, I bow the head to the heart, may the wisdom of the body and the wisdom of the mind unite together to support our collective healing and evolution. With love and joy, continue on to the rest of your day.